Hello again. Welcome to class three of More Data Mining with Weka. In this class, we're going to look at rules and clustering. And in the first couple of lessons, we're going to look at decision rules. I'm going to look uh, in this lesson uh, at rules versus trees in abstract, as it were. And uh, in the next lesson, we'll look at how to generate decision rules. We talked a lot about decision trees in data mining with Weka. And for any decision tree, you can read off an equivalent set of rules. You just go along the leaves for each of the five leaves. You just read off the conditions above that leaf that get you from the root to the leaf. If outlook is sunny and humidity is high, then no, that's a rule corresponding to the leftmost leaf. So uh, that's uh, easy. And we call this a decision list if we execute these rules in order. So if we execute them in order, then we can delete some of these clauses. So we can delete the and humidity is normal in the second rule because we've already dealt with a humidity is high case in the first rule and there are no other options. If it's not high, it's got to be normal. And similarly, in the fourth rule, we can delete the outlook equals rainy bit because we've already dealt with sunny and overcast. And if we pass through those rules, then the outlook has got to be rainy. So using this technique, if we execute our rules as a decision list, we can make the rule set a little bit simpler. But there are other rule sets which are equivalent that are even simpler again. So uh, let's uh, look at this rule set, this through three rule set. And imagine, is there an equivalent tree? So for any tree, you can make rules. For any set of rules, can you make a tree? And the answer is you can. This is slightly more abstract than the previous example. I've got if x is 1 and y is 1, then a. If z is 1 and w is 1, then a, otherwise b. And I'm assuming that both x and y uh, have got uh, three possible uh, values. So we branch on X and Y down the left hand branch and if they're both 1 that's A. Fantastic. Uh, otherwise though if Y is 2 then we've got to check Z and W and that's done in that kind of grey tree underneath which is a little bit complex. And to make matters much worse we've got to repeat this tree. If Y is 3 then we've got to repeat the same tree. That little grey triangle stands for that whole grey tree replicated a total of four copies of it in this. So we start with a rather simple set of rules and we end up with a pretty complicated tree. So in one sense trees and rules are equivalent. They can describe the same things. Given a tree you can create a set of rules. Given a set of rules you can create a tree. But in practice they're very different because particularly if rules are expressed as a decision list and are executed in order then uh, they can be much smaller than trees. People like rules. They're easy to read and understand. And it's tempting to view them as independent kind of nuggets of knowledge, you know. But if you're executing them as a decision list, and you usually are, then the meaning of a rule is can, must be taken in the context of the rules that precede it. So they don't really stand independently, or they, they look like they do. So one way of creating rules, let's say you want to create rules, you could just create a decision tree and we know how to do that. The top down divided conquer method used by J48 and read rules off the tree, one rule for each leaf like we did at the beginning. Very straightforward, but the rules will contain repeated tests and you can get rid of some of those quite easily, but more effective conversions are not so easy to do. Another completely different approach for generating rules is to do it bottom up, a covering method. It's called separate and conquer. So we work on the different classes in turn. For each class in turn, we find the rules that cover all of its instances. And we do that by first identifying a useful rule and then separating out those instances it covers and then carry on and conquer the remaining instances in that class, finding more rules for them. So here's a simple little example. We're going to generate a rule for class A. And uh, we start out with a rule that says everything is class A. Of course, that rule is not correct. So we add clauses to that rule. If x is greater than 1.2, then class is A. And that rule is still not correct, but it's uh, better than the first rule. And then we can add another clause to make it even more correct. Uh, if x is greater than 1.2 and y is greater than 2.6, then class is A. That's completely correct. 
it does miss out one other A, and we could add a new rule for that, or we could decide that maybe we don't need to because it's just one instance that's being missed out. And then uh, for a rule for class B, we can say if X is less than 1.2, then classes B, that gets half of them. And another rule could be if X is greater than 1.2 and Y is less than 2.6, then classes B. And we could get rid of the first test if we knew those rules were going to be executed in order. So we could add more rules to get a perfect rule set, or we could stop there with the rules that we have. The termination conditions are something that you have to decide on when you devise a rule-making algorithm. And uh, here's a decision tree that corresponds to the rule set we just looked at. So rule sets can be more perspicuous than decision trees. Decision trees sometimes have to contain replicated subtrees. And also, there's a big difference between the divide and conquer and the separate and conquer, the top-down and the bottom-up algorithms. Uh, because in a multi-class situation, the covering algorithm focuses on one class at a time and gets rules for that class, whereas the divide and conquer decision tree algorithm takes all the classes into account when making any of the decisions. So here's the details of a simple bottom-up covering algorithm for creating rules. It's called PRISM. And it consists of three loops. The outer loop is over each class. And then uh, the middle loop is uh, we're going to cover some of the instances in that class and then carry on creating more rules that cover more of the instances until we're satisfied we've covered enough. And then the inner loop is taking a rule and adding clauses to the rule until it's accurate enough. So it's a simple iterative algorithm for covering a data set class by class, instance by instance, bottom up, elaborating the rules with more conditions as we go along. Okay, that's it. Well, we've seen that decision uh, trees and rules have got the same expressive power, but either can be more perspicuous than the other. It just depends on the data set. Rules can be created using a bottom up covering process, and they're often executed as decision lists in order. If rules assign different classes to an instance, then the first rule wins if you're executing them in order. Which means that the rules are not really independent nuggets of knowledge. Still, people like rules and they often prefer them to trees. Uh, so there's some stuff in the textbook about uh, covering algorithms for rules and an activity which will make you think about rules for data sets. Uh, so off you go and do that and we'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.